In this lesson, we want to review the definition of a rational expression. We also want to talk about finding the restricted values for a rational expression. So before we jump in and start talking about how to find the restricted values for a rational expression, we want to think about the definition of a rational expression. And to properly do this, let's recall the definition of a rational number. So at the beginning of our course, we reviewed the definition of a rational number. We said that it was any real number that could be formed as the quotient of two integers where the denominator was not zero. So something like the number one, four. One is an integer, four is an integer. So you have the quotient of two integers, the denominator is not zero, so that's a rational number. Something like negative seven fifths, something like 11 fourteenths, something like just the number 10, right? 10 could be 10 over one, right? So all of these fit that description. The main thing to understand here is that we can't divide by zero, so we can't have zero in the denominator, okay? So that's very important. Now, we think about these as rational numbers, but more practically, we just call them fractions. So in algebra, we have an algebraic fraction. This is known as a rational expression. And what this is, is this is the quotient of two polynomials where the denominator is not zero. So something like 3x minus 1 over, let's say, 5x squared plus 2. One polynomial over another. So that's a rational expression. As another example, let's say you had 2x squared plus 5x minus 1 over, let's say, 3x to the fourth power plus x plus 7, okay? So you have a polynomial up here, a polynomial down here. So one polynomial divided by another, again, that gives us a rational expression. So essentially, when you start working with rational expressions, the first topic you come across is how to find the restricted values for a rational expression. Now this topic just basically deals with division by zero. We know that we're not allowed to divide by zero. If we see something where we have division by zero, it's considered undefined. So something like three over zero, let me make that three a little better. This is undefined, okay? That would be your answer there. In the case, and I know some of you will be confused and say no, three over zero is zero. That's not right, right? When you divide zero, by a non-zero number, you get zero. So zero divided by three would be zero, okay? You can divide zero by anything you want except zero, you get zero. But if you try to divide by zero, it is undefined, okay? So if I had a rational expression like x plus seven over x minus five, what would be my restricted value here? Well, it's anything that makes the denominator zero, okay? So if I look at my denominator, it is x minus five. So how do I find the value for x that makes this denominator zero? All I need to do is set my denominator equal to zero and just solve, right? What am I doing? Something minus five gives me zero. I'm gonna solve for that something so that I know what I can't plug in for x. It's just that simple. So very easy, we just add five to each side of the equation this will cancel, we'll have x is equal to five, okay? And you can easily see if I let x be equal to five, let's say that we let x be equal to five, plug in a five here and here. So you would have five plus seven in the numerator, which is 12 over, the denominator would be five minus five, which is of course zero. And again, this is undefined, undefined. And this is what we're trying to prevent. We don't want to end up with something that's undefined. So what we do when we have a rational expression is we find our restricted value or our restricted values, depending on how complex your rational expression is. And we just put a little note here. We say that this is defined for everything except for x when it's equal to five. So we'll put x cannot be equal to, or x does not equal five, okay? A fancier way to do this is to state the domain, okay? So the domain, in case you haven't seen anything with functions yet, and we'll talk more about this later in the course, the domain is the set of allowable x values. So what is allowed to be plugged in here for x? Well, everything in terms of real numbers can be plugged in for x except for five. So the domain, or again, the set of allowable values for x, 
which say the set of all real numbers or the set of all elements x such that x does not equal the number 5. Okay, So anything you want to plug in for x there is fine, except for 5, because it makes the denominator 0. All right, let's look at another example. So we have 9x minus 1 over 3x minus 4. Again, all we need to do to find the restricted values, we take the denominator here, and we just set it equal to 0. So we're going to solve 3x minus 4 equals 0. To solve this, I add 4 to each side of the equation. That cancels. I would have 3x is equal to 4. Divide both sides of the equation by 3, and I would end up with x is equal to 4 thirds. Okay. So again, I can write comma x does not equal 4 thirds, or I can do it in the fancy way. So I can say my domain, okay, my domain is the set of all elements x, and then such that x does not equal 4 thirds, okay? All right, let's look at another one. So we have 2x squared plus 7x minus 4 over 3x squared minus 21x. So again, I'm only concerned with the denominator here. So I'm just going to set this equal to 0, and I'm going to solve it. Now, you can get super complicated things in your denominator. This guy right here is not complicated at all. We can solve it by factoring. In case you're not familiar with solving something by factoring, the first thing you would do is factor this guy. So we can see that we have a common factor of 3x. We can pull that out. So if we pulled out 3x, I would have an x minus 7 here, and this is equal to 0. Now, what I'm going to do to solve this using factoring, I'm going to set each factor equal to 0. So I'm going to set 3x equal to 0, and I'm going to set x minus 7 equal to 0, and I'm going to solve each one of those. Now, why does that work? We have something known as the zero product property. So if you have something like A, and it's multiplied by B, and it's equal to zero, well then one of these statements has to be true. A is equal to zero, B is equal to zero, or both A and B are equal to zero. So in other words, we know that multiplying by zero gives me zero. So it could be true that A is zero and B is not. It could be true that B is zero and A is not. And it could be true that A and B are both zero. So that's the premise behind the zero product property. And essentially, all I'm going to do here is just set 3x equal to 0 and solve. Divide both sides by 3. I get x is equal to 0. I'm going to set x minus 7 equal to 0 and solve. Add 7 to each side of the equation. I get x is equal to 7. So we have two solutions here, and thus two values we need to restrict from our domain. So if I plugged in a 7 for x, or if I plugged in a 0 for x, I would get 0 as a denominator. And I think we can see that, right? If you plugged in a 0 here and here, you would have 3 times 0 squared minus 21 times 0. 0 squared is, of course, 0. 0 times 3 is 0. Minus 0 times 21 is 0. 0 minus 0 is 0. So the denominator would be 0 if you plugged in a 0 for x. Okay, so we see that. Also, the denominator would be 0 if you plugged in a 7. 7 squared is 49. 49 times 3 is 147. So you'd have 147 minus 21 times 7 is also 147. So you get 147 minus 147, which is 0. So we're going to write that x cannot be 0 and x cannot be 7. Let me kind of scooch these up. I'll scooch this up. So I'll put a comma here. And you can put a comma there if you want. So again, all real numbers are allowed except for 0 and 7. So we can write this again in this kind of fancy way. The domain is the set of all elements x such that x does not equal 0 or 7. All right, let's take a look at one more. So very easy concept overall. The only thing that can make it more difficult is the tediousness of the denominator, right? If you get something that's super complex, it might not be so easy to solve. You can't solve everything with factoring. You might have a very, very difficult denominator to work with. But for this, I'm just trying to show you the concept, so I gave you things that are pretty easy. So we have 2x minus 5 over 2x squared minus 9x minus 5. I'm just going to set, again, this guy right here equal to 0. So 2x squared minus 9x minus 5 equals 0. So here, we're not going to factor out the greatest common factor. We're going to factor this into the product of two binomials. So I'm going to do this using reverse FOIL. 
The reason I'm going to choose reverse foil is because this coefficient here, this 2, is a prime number. So I know this would be 2x and this would be x. I just have to work out the correct outer and inner, right? So I know that I want a product of negative 5. So that can only come from 5 times 1 with the signs being different, right? So I got to have either negative 1 times 5 or negative 5 times 1. So knowing that I have a middle term of negative 9x, I'm going to want to multiply 2x by negative 5, and I'm going to multiply x by positive 1, right? 2x times negative 5 will give me negative 10x, and then 1 times x would give me 1x. 1x plus negative 10x would be negative 9x. So we factored this one pretty quickly. All right, so now I'm just going to set each factor. This is a factor, and this is a factor, equal to 0. So I would have 2x plus 1 equal to 0, and I would have x minus 5 equal to 0. So let me kind of slide this out of the way so we have a little room. So for this guy, let me kind of scooch this down. So for this guy, I'm going to subtract 1 away to start. So this cancels. I would have 2x is equal to negative 1. Divide both sides by 2, and you would get that x is equal to negative 1 half. For this guy, I just add 5 to each side of the equation. Very simple. You get x equals 5. So let me erase everything. Kind of scooch these over. So we'll say x does not equal negative 1 half. And also x does not equal 5. Okay, let me make that a little better. So we can again write this using our domain statement. So domain is, let me make that better, the set of all x such that x does not equal to, you have negative 1 half and then 5. 